Good evening and good afternoon and uh, hello uh, from Inside the Outhouse. Uh, it's Monday the 25th of October and I just wanted to say um, welcome back to the Outhouse for another week uh, where we're connecting the community in this virtual space. Uh, I'm going to throw to Pete before we, and we'll do a, bit, a little bit of housekeeping and then we'll uh, uh, throw over to John Cameron from uh, Wholesome Food Calculator. Pete. Thanks Dave. Uh, hello everyone, my name is Pete Smith, founder of Orator and Telemarker, and I'm very excited about this presentation that's before us. Um, just like to do an a acknowledgement of country, uh, we acknowledge the traditional owners of country throughout Australia and recognise the continuing connection to lands, waters and communities. We pay our respect to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders cultures and to their elders both past present and emerging. Whilst I've got your ears, thanks to the amazing outhouse oligarchs for all their toil and hard work to make this vital community project happen and look beautiful. A couple of other wor worthy mentions. Uh, Dr. Dr. Chitsamahali, the father of Flo, passed away last week at age 87. And for me, his seminal work on flow, creativity and happiness changed me and my thinking around experiential education and my research ultimately. What a character, what a legend. Uh, just a reminder that the AWE Virtual International Conference is coming up at the, between the 11th and the 14th of November and check out the uh, video from our last session. And lastly, this Friday night at 6 p.m. Queensland time, uh, we have the Outdoor Queensland Awards and uh, Inside the Outhouse is being nominated as a finalist. So that's all I've got. Back to you, Dave. Thanks, Pete. Um, very exciting news. Uh, hopefully uh, we'll post a link in the chat shortly. Um, they'll be streaming the awards ceremony on Facebook Live and uh, hopefully we're in the running there. Uh, we're the second to last award. Uh, there's a keynote speaker uh, from Climbing QTs, um, name escapes me, Pete, um, but uh, she uh, was previously in one of our discussions in the past as well. But I'll post all those in the link. Uh, without further ado, I'm going to throw over to John Canman. Uh, John's calling in at about 1 a.m. in the morning from Montana in the uh, good old United States of America. Um, I, I get to do that uh, accent occasionally. It's a really bad accent. Uh, I did work in the States for a little bit, so I, I get to get away with that. John's the... Um, owner and creator of uh, wholesomefoodcalculator.com. Uh, it's in the chat right now. Um, it's a online um, catering and uh, <coughs> I'll, I'll let John explain. It's an amazing piece of uh, software that I discovered earlier in the year when I was putting together a massive expedition uh, for my uh, employer. Uh, Somerset College and allowed me to create menus, uh, deal with dietary restrictions or requirements and was all in the cloud and didn't have any Excel spreadsheets. So I was very excited about it. Um, it produced a lot of good outcomes for me and I'm trying to work my way towards getting a uh, paid subscription uh, uh, through the school um, uh, eventually. So um, I'm going to throw over to John. He's going to have about a 20 minute demo, a bit of a chat about who he is and where he's from and why he got into the business of uh, doing uh, food uh, um, <laughs> food food service uh, delivery, I guess. I don't know what, this, what to call that. Uh, I'll show over to John. Yeah, thanks so much, David. I appreciate it. Um, and happy to hear that Wholesome worked well for you um, in, the, in that last trip. Um, yeah, so as David mentioned, my name is John Kamen. I am based in Missoula, Montana, which is up in the, the Rocky Mountains. Um, and we're, it's, it's a, a beautiful time here. I mean, maybe one, one in the morning here, which isn't a beautiful time particularly, but it's a beautiful time of year here. Um, we have, um, there's like a two or three week time frame most years where the, the larches, the, the tamarack trees here turn, um, but there's still snow on the mountain. So it's this wild mix of colors in the mountains um, before the snow fully takes over. So it's, I, I wish I could point a, point a, a camera at the, at the mountains for you during the daytime. Um, instead. Um, great to join you all and great to know that this community exists. I think we could use some regional communities like this in the United States. It's not something that um, that I see very often happening in a recurring way. You know, I, I see them in the annual conferences like AEE, but um, 
happy to jump on here and, and see this lively community existing. So it's wonderful. Thanks for having me. Um, I thought I'd start with just sort of a little backstory about sort of myself and Wholesome and how we came to make this tool. And, um, and then I can do a, a share my screen and give you kind of a, a quick crash course of how to use the tool. I often spend a little bit more time in the demos going more in depth in some of the tools. And I won't do that today, but I will give you kind of a superficial overview of it. And then if, if anybody cares to dive in with specific questions, we can do that as well. Um, so a little backstory is I, I came from sort of the outdoor education world myself and starting back in, um, in maybe 2003, 2004 as a, a student, um, working as a, you know, student employment at a university, packing food for trips, um, that were going out throughout the United States and having no clue either how to plan for those trips or how to cook any food. Um, it was, food was usually sort of a disaster on those experiences. And um, I, at that time I was good with Excel. And so I was at least using um, spreadsheets to like pull together some quantities when we would try to send out these trips, canoeing, backpacking and whatnot. They were not environmental ed in nature. It was just sort of getting students out into the field to try to um, support outdoor learning. and. I spent the majority of my career since that time in environmental education. That was what I focused on as a um, academically, and in pretty much every organization that I've poked my head into for whatever period of time, there has been food planning as sort of one of the core pieces of what the staff were doing, and there was no organized system or limited organized system behind making sure that it was done efficiently and effectively. And I don't know if you, you all have seen this as well in Australia, but there's just a huge surge in dietary restrictions, allergies, uh, preferences um, that over the last you know 15 years has made food planning really, really difficult um, for everybody. And I think that's like in some ways clouded the ability of outdoor programming organizations to, to really focus on the work that they're, that they care about and that they're really trained to do. Um, it, it, it can take a lot of time. And so um, <clears throat> over the years, I had developed a few tools, particularly spreadsheets, occasionally like a Microsoft Access database to try to solve this problem. And it always kind of worked. Like it wasn't, I wouldn't say that that was an abject failure. We, we often made things better through those tools, um, but they had their weaknesses. They had, you know, they were wildly complicated. You had to be really, Excel proficient in order to use them, let alone change them. They were um, they were difficult to train new folks on, um, and they still sort of like lacked some of the functionality that we would want from it anyway. And I finally made like the master spreadsheet of all spreadsheets that was so complicated and so you know as as good as I could possibly make it. And at that time, I started getting some organizations knocking on my door. This is while I was still working in that sort of environmental ed world. And um, I started sharing sharing the spreadsheet, but it was just, it's not the kind of tool that you can just send in an email and somebody will figure out how to use it. Um, and so it was around that time after the fourth, fifth, sixth organization asked for it that, I thought, you know, there's, there's, there's gotta be a tool out there to, to help solve this problem. And, uh, and there just wasn't from what I could tell. And, um, so we, about six years ago, my wife and I started um, developing and then eventually working with the development team to build what is now Wholesome. Um, so that's that's kind of the, the origin story of, of where it's come to. And then it's been really fun since then, because while I came at it from this sort of um, environmental ed standpoint, in my mind, it was really like um, car camping and backpacking trips that were, um, that was my experience with the challenges of food planning. And then I kind of opened up into this world of first of whitewater rafting. I'm not sure if you all have experience with this as well, but Montana's yeah, really a, a destination for um, whitewater enthusiasts and food on these multi-day rafting trips is a whole different animal um, where in backpacking trips, you're, you know, 
trying to go as lightweight as possible and and minimize the burden of carrying it on these rafting trips they're just going you know eating shellfish and steak and uh, bloody marys every morning and it's just it's a it's a whole different animal and the outfitters that put this together um food is really like one of the things that they that they focus on as a selling point for their work and so the rafting community has sort of gotten behind it and we've added tools along the way and then summer camps are actually in a similar boat that's um that's a completely different piece where they're sometimes doing the the backcountry trips that have a very similar challenge that most of the outdoor ed world has but then they also have the residential kitchen that is um you know feeding people on a daily basis and in pretty much all of these cases <clears throat> there's spreadsheets kind of broken access databases and occasionally like a, a personal meal planning tool out, that's out there and um we've we've been doing our best to kind of spread the the word about wholesome because it's actually designed for group group meal planning um in a way that's hopefully flexible enough to deal with it um across different industries knowing full well that every organization and every person does this differently and planning food for people is a wildly complicated i i was very naive in thinking that i could crack this nut fully it's uh it's it's uh it's it's a messy business trying to to feed people with the the different ways of purchasing different ways of packing the different preferences and dietary restrictions that people have um yeah but it's been a fun fun learning curve for me so um with that unless there are immediate questions i can jump in and and give kind of a quick overview of how the tool works and then we can spend some time talking about it if there are specifics sound good sounds great great so let me get set up with a screen share here okay does that look like it's working everybody can see it great Okay, so um, I'm going to start with just jumping right into the platform. I've logged into my account, um, sort of a dummy account that I use for testing things out and, and some of these webinar type experiences. But this is essentially what you would see if you logged in or signed up for the trial. Um, and just as a quick overview of what we're going to do, most of the time here that we're going to spend is at the top um, of this row. There are sort of three sections to, to wholesome the recipes the ingredients and the meal plans and i'll show you each one of those one thing i did want to call out um before we jump into the actual tool is this recipe collections which is at the bottom right you can also find it here in the the footer the recipe collections and even if you decide you know we've got our own tool wholesome's not the right time or fit for me um i think that there's some value in this and you can access it without um paying it all. This is um, a, a few years ago, um, several organizations were asking about what other organizations were doing. And I realized that there wasn't much of a community around sharing the recipes and the work of um, all of these different organizations. And so if you wanted to scroll through what different rafting organizations were doing, or if you wanted to see um, what different university outdoor programs were doing, you can hop in here and, and see some of these recipes and what they're doing. So that's a, a tool hopefully you can use regardless of whether wholesome is the right fit for you. Um, just to kind of see what, at least in the United States, what a lot of these organizations are serving to their, their students or their clients. Um, so with that, let me jump in. Um, as I mentioned, there's these three steps, recipes, ingredients, and meal plans. And basically what this will do is we'll start with recipes. And this is where you have an opportunity to build in the recipes that you use to serve your students, your clients your participants. Um, it's going to be a self-defined process for the most part. And then as you do that, it's it'll fill out the ingredients list. So this will be the list of all of the ingredients that are in all of your recipes. And it's sort of an optional step where you can apply a few additional details like where do you buy this? You know, what store or vendor? Um, what does it cost? Are there any notes you want to make about the brand or the purchasing? Um, uh, details that you want to use and both of those are sort of upfront work that you put in at the beginning to kind of dial in um, the foods that you'll be serving and then the last step which is where you spend most of your time 
um, is at the meal plan. So these are the for the specific groups. When you say I've got you know 25 participants coming to join this specific trip, here are their dietary restrictions. Here are the meals we're going to serve. Here's the, the duration. We will do that at the meal plan section. Um, so I'll, I'll give you a quick overview of each of those, and then we can talk more in detail about some of the nuances of dealing with dietary restrictions and stuff like that. So here's a recipe list. When you start, this will be blank. Um, I've got a bunch of them created and defined here, um, and you can build yours out. It's a pretty straightforward process. So here's an example, bagels and cream cheese for 10 people. We're gonna serve 10 whole bagels and one tub of cream cheese. I, there's a lot of different units that you can use here um, to build out your recipes, but it's just like um, building out any recipe matching the quantities of the ingredients to the amount of people that'll be served. And the way in which those um, connect, the numbers that you choose are not particularly important because this will scale up or scale down later. So if you think of it in per person quantities, you can enter them as per person quantities. If you serve groups of 100 at a time, you can start with 100 at a time, as long as they map the ingredient quantities match the, the individual served up there. And this is where you can add some details. Um, Tag specific recipes, add the dietary restrictions here, add some instructions, that sort of thing. And you'll move through and, and basically create um, as many recipes as you'd like um, through that. So that's um, hopefully pretty straightforward. There are ways to import recipes from those collections that I shared a minute ago. Um, and you can also import them from allrecipes.com. Um, so that's, that's the recipes piece. Number Two here is that second step I mentioned is that ingredients section. <clears throat> so that's what we're looking at here. So as I created all those recipes, it populated this whole list of all of the, the ingredients in here. And this is a place you can add as much or as little detail. Notes about this ingredient, it'll show, show you what um, recipe or recipes it's listed in. You can define the store, what department um, in that store it's in and any cost estimates. And the idea here is that the final shopping list or packing list that you get will be populated with all this information, sorted by what store it's in, sorted by the department so that you can really quickly um, move through the shopping process or packing process as you need to. So that's the ingredients. And now let me jump to, this is the fun stuff. So this is where we actually get to plan our, our groups. So on the left are some folders where I can keep things organized and on the right are a, a bunch of groups that I've uh, made in the past. And I will just start by making a new one. We'll call it inside the outhouse group. And here's, this is where we can define the number of people. So let's say we've got 25 people with normal appetite. If you wanna do adjustments for small or large, you can do that. Um, this is the most simple version of dietary restriction management. If, uh, if time permits, I can show you one that's a little bit more automatic that'll do some uh, flagging and substitutions automatically. But in this case, we'll just check off what dietary restrictions are present in the group. And then down on the bottom is where we can actually make um, the meal plan. So on the left are all of the meals that I've, the, all the recipes that I created in that first step. And on the right is our planning grid so I can just bring these over and um, make whatever recipe or whatever meal plan that I want to make here, sort of filter it by different, um, these are, I'm realizing these are like the most American meals possible that are listed here. Um, but you get the idea, we can add multiple um, multiples to, to each um, box if that's helpful. And I'll just add a few more just to get the sense of how this how this goes. Okay, great. You'll notice this flag here. Um, this is just calling your attention to note that, hey, one of the ingredients in this recipe might conflict with the dietary restrictions in your group. So you can either choose to ignore that or make some adjustments based on that. But this, at this point, it's just calling out your attention. <clears throat> and then the final step now that we have our meal plan is down here where it's assuming that every person in the group is going to eat that um, eat that meal. 
So if that's not the case, because somebody's joining late or somebody's leaving early, or you're using this to manage dietary restrictions where you're serving different meals to different people, this is where you can scale this back to whatever amounts the number of people are going to um, consume it. So with that, I'll say save. And um, this is our this is our meal plan now. So there's a few ways in which we can view this. So I'm looking at it now on the website. There's a PDF that I often um, jump to as the first place to look. And there is a spreadsheet on here in case uh, that's your most comfortable way of working through. But right now, let me just jump to the PDF. So this is the full shopping list for what, or packing list for what we need for this group. It'll be scaled up to that 25 individuals and it will aggregate across um, multiple meals. So if you're using the same ingredient in multiple meals, it'll um, pull that together. So that's the, the first part. It'll be sorted by the store or the vendor. Um, second part is this menu planning grid so that you can kind of see the overall plan and the number of people eating each one. And then finally, you know, if you have, um, uh, these are the recipe details. So if you have guides or instructors that are out there that need a little bit um, more instruction on how to cook it, this is the, the instructions that you've put in there and then the ingredients needed specifically for that, um, for that recipe will be found in the last section. Yeah. So that is. That's, um, that's, I ran through that really quickly, but that's sort of the, the bare bones of Wholesome. One of the nice and sort of accidental things that's happened with the slow process of development that we've gone through over the last five, six years, and as different industries came on, is that we have added a lot of sort of um, additional features, additional tools that we can turn on. Um, and with each one of those, it adds a little bit more complexity, but also adds a little bit more power. and um, if, uh, if we want to dive into those, we, some of those we can. Um, they're all managed from the settings page. And we can, um, one of the nice things is that we can just sort of start with it really simple and then come in here and turn on um, some of the things that manage dietary restrictions a little bit better, the export power, um, you know, and, 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 and details like that. So we can jump into those if, if time permits. But I wanted to pause there to just give you the, the quick overview and see what kind of questions are. Thoughts pop up. And I've got a question. It, it looks great. Yeah. Um, when it comes to the meal planning end, uh, if I'm running a program and I've got 10 groups, um, so I need to buy in bulk. So I saw the, the shopping list and the PDF that gets exported out was for that one group. Um, yeah. Is that compoundable can i change that to go great yes look that's what i want for one group but i need it times 10 and i want a shopping list that has all of that on it yeah so this little um it's a good question thanks rob um this little button here this export list button will, will show me all of the ones that i have here and then i can combine um any of those groups or i can multiply them um, magic and that will pull it together to to get a full aggregated one for the, the total quantities, yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, it can be Thank super you. helpful. Rob, yeah, no Rob, problem. Rob, you want to ask your other question? Uh, sorry, Olga, do you want to ask your question or shall I just read it from the chat? Oh, sorry if I missed them in the chat. All right, well, in, in, in the chat, it said, um, so with the allergens list, does it contain all the common ones that we have here in Australia? Good question. I have no idea what allergens you have in Australia, but I will say um, it, it in the settings, this is one of the things that it'll come in um, preset with this list, which are the most common, at least in the United States. Um, and then that you can change these so you can add or remove them to um, to add the list that you want to manage most. So, so you can make a customized uh, allergens list. So if, if they're allergic to green jelly, uh, you can add that. Allergic and to if, hard um, work. <laughs> um, Olga also had another question. Uh, are the PDFs only available in the enterprise version? No, um, I can jump there right now just to give you an overview of what's there. Um, 
<clears throat> and I and some of this might not make sense because I haven't gone through all of the uh, specific line item feature pieces here. Um, but most of the most organizations use this professional one, and that does have um, both Excel and PDF exports. Um, and then the PDF is available with with, with Basic as well. I think uh, you might need to correct me, John, but there is a 14-day demo. Um, if you register, mm -hmm. I think you can just apply and, and get that. And that gives you access to obviously all the features initially, which gives you a really good idea of um, yeah, what you do you need, what would you like to have? And then and, you know, obviously you can come back and look at yeah, what your uh, what your budget actually is going to look like, uh, given that it's uh, in American dollars and you've got to do the exchange rate on that as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, thanks. There is a two-week free trial um, with no no payment information needed to jump in there and you can experiment and play around as much as you want. Um, one of the things that we learned pretty quickly is that a lot of the people who need Wholesome don't operate year round. And so um, if you if you um, want to do it monthly, you can just sort of adjust this toggle and pay for whatever months you need it. And then there's a there's sort of a, 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 a pause button that you can Mine's inactive currently, but there's a sort of a pause button that you can put on and all the data, all the recipes and all that will live in the background still until you're ready to start up again. But yeah, that's and up. I find that's really useful in my environment, John, because I do a lot of camps all at once. And then I go into a very quiet period where like at the moment for term four, no camps. I'm just planning for the next lot of camps in term one. So I'm not doing any, any usage of the, of the product. So that works really well as a client yeah. thing. Uh, I had a question um, before anyone else jumps in. Um, uh, how do you adjust for, and we, I think we saw it in the, in the full menu list of ingredients there, um, how do you adjust if you have a dietary need? So let's say a gluten intolerance or um, let's just make it that. And you put that in as a, does it, uh, as a alternative meal for a gluten-free meal. Does it automatically adjust for that or do you need to manually adjust for that? Yeah, based upon the fact that it might, might only be two people in a group of 20. Yeah, great. Um, so that's a great segue. Maybe we, if, if you're up for it, we can talk a little bit about dietary restrictions because that's one of the, the biggest challenges, it seems that, like. Um, that, that's how I sold the uh, session today. Uh, <laughs> or whatever, yeah, whatever. it's, it's uh, scary. Uh, <laughs> yeah, something. I had some Halloween theme going. It wasn't very uh, well thought out, but yeah, Let, let's, let's talk yeah. dietary needs. Totally. Um, it's... Um, it's it's a really it can be a really tricky issue and it, it seems to also be one that has can create a lot of food anxiety for people that are are uh, joining when they're not the ones planning their own food um, and I, I've come to think about this in sort of three different strategies and it, it's really like a blending of those strategies but it seems like most organizations use one or more of three different approaches and I can show you sort of how those three different approaches map to the tool in case um, you fall into one of those camps. So one of them that's not used very common because it's not a crowd pleaser is just sort of the lowest common denominator version. So if we've got somebody that's gluten intolerant, there's no gluten on the trip, right? We just remove it from the group. And, um, you know, as I mentioned, that's not the most common or the most, um, crowd pleasing version of it. But if you need to do that, we can just filter out those recipes that don't have gluten. And now we can plan on a limited, a more limited menu and just eliminate that. So that's, that's one easy approach, but I, I realize that it's not always the best approach. Um, so the second one is more meal substitution. And so what I mean by that <clears throat> is when you have a dietary restriction, when someone's vegetarian or there's a, a gluten intolerance, we're gonna we're gonna serve completely different meals. So it's not that we're gonna have if we have pasta, a pasta meal, we're not gonna bring the gluten free pasta and everybody's eating pasta, but we're substituting ingredients. Instead, we're gonna substitute the whole meal. So instead of pasta, these folks are gonna have rice and beans, and it's a completely separate meal. So in that case, um, you know, I showed the tool to deal with it, but just to be more pointed, let's say it's this last meal of spaghetti and meatballs, um, we can find the rice and beans. Um, we'll add rice and beans there. And then when I come down to the actual planning here, I can say, okay, well, only 20 people are having this and five people are going to have that. 
it's not automatic it's a manual adjustment process um but that manages that second piece which is the the meal substitution <clears throat> so that's number one number two and then the third one that i think is becoming more and more common is more ingredient substitution where we're going to serve pasta and everybody's eating pasta and if you're gluten-free we're gonna um bring the gluten free pasta. And if you're vegetarian, we're going to bring a vegetarian sauce. And it becomes a little bit more, I don't know if this is the way the outdoor industry is moving in Australia as well, but it's a little bit more of a like build your own um, meal, build your own breakfast. And there's oatmeal and there's, um, you know, different fruits and different nut butters and whatever else. Um, and so with that third one, where we're, where we're substituting ingredients, we did build in an automatic component there. So I can um, show you that really quickly. So I'm going to jump to settings and turn on this one, the substitute ingredients. And the first thing that that will do is, um, let me jump to that spaghetti and meatballs, <clears throat> um, is you'll see that there's now this substitute column. So I'm back at that recipe. And what we can say is for spaghetti newton noodles, if somebody has a wheat or gluten intolerance. So you'll check off the dietary restriction and then you'll build in the one-to-one -one substitute here for what we're gonna use in place of this. And then same down here for meat, you know, maybe we'll bring in a frozen veggie package or whatever it is, a, a vegetarian sauce. You can, you can build in whatever you need to there to define the substitutes that you would use. And then when I come back to this meal plan, that we made instead of just check boxes it'll actually be sliders so we can say this is how many people um you know don't have these don't eat these um ingredients and when i um when i make the meal plan then it should um hopefully we've saved the changes enough to do this um it should bring in oops it should bring in the gluten-free um, pasta that you need. I'd have to search for it a little bit here to find it. But it should bring in the gluten-free pasta, and then it will also define the substitutes in the, the recipe here, where you'll see here there's a, a substitute for flour tortillas in the corn um, tortillas, so that it'll actually make the adjustments on the fly for that group. Does that make sense? I kind of ran through some of those quickly, but there's there's different approaches and every organization does it a little bit different or some combination of those things. Um, but that's, uh, there are tools to deal with each one of them. And I, I also find that some people, you know, that Wholesome will get them, get them 90, 95% of the way there. And because food planning can be so so difficult, it may not be perfect. And so a lot of people will use the the spreadsheet to then go in and make those manual changes that they know because they're, they're working more closely with the group to, um, to work through it. Uh, John, just another question uh, in the chat. What a fantastic resource. Um, I, I've no, personally wasted large amounts of time <laughs> using Excel spreadsheets and put food together. Yeah. Um, the question in the chat from Olga again is, is there a metric option, e.g. grams, kilograms? Uh, yes. In, uh, yeah, there is. Um, so the in the units, you'll there's two two ways in which that'll come through. One is um, in the actual units. I'll just jump in here. <clears throat> As you build your recipe, um, we have both the USN metric uh, weights and volumes built in there, and then the other is in the shopping list itself. Um, there's you can have yeah. So it did, that must be why you asked because it didn't show up there. Um, you can define which um, which columns you'd like to see. So I don't have the metric selected here. And you can turn that on to, to make whatever column is most appropriate there. Yeah, so I refresh that, it should show up. John is um, having used it for um, one set of programming for 130 students and six groups. Yeah. Um, uh, the, the most challenging thing I found was, as you can see, even on the packing list there where it has uh, a point, you know, two point seven eight jars of something, and I, I under yeah. appreciate there is a way to round stuff up, but um, 
having yeah behind me right now i had to move because I, I was running out of power i have a cupboard full of leftover food you know eight, eight yeah. thousand tins of tuna and <laughs> i'm exaggerating but you get the impression yeah lots of tuna lots of salmon that just wasn't eaten not because uh it was badly managed by me it wasn't eaten by the students but um yeah for next year looking at it i would probably reduce the amount by half but is there a way to not have an ordering list because i'm going to give this to one of my minions to go out and actually purchase the stuff either directly off shelves at Coles or you know, yeah. a, a local supermarket, or I'm going to send it via email to that Coles at the supermarket and say, please fill this order and then we'll come and pick it up. Is there a way, is, is there a way to not have it as shown on, on the, on the packing list of it having to go in and manually edit, edit it? Again, I'm thinking yeah. about workflow processes because you're under the pump, the pack stuff and organize your gear. And, and yeah, the last thing you want to do is micromanage the, the order. Yeah. Great. Um, great question. And first I, I guess I'd say, so yes, there is, and I can show you that in a second. Um, but to your, Point on the leftovers there um, two quick things one is um uh i think um one of the things we found and and i didn't really expect at the beginning when we started down this path is that wholesome can there's a lot of power in sort of an iterative process here where as you learn that oh i brought too much salmon um you can come back and adjust that recipe so that in future years you get closer and closer to an accurate um, count and um we have found that the organizations that really stick with it for a few years have seen a big reduction in food waste as well, which has been um, a nice sort of unexpected, not totally unexpected, but um, somewhat unexpected perk of wholesome. We've had a few of the guides and instructors complain about it because they used to always go home with so much free food after the <laughs> after the, the trips that, the, that, that it's been cut back. Um, but to your question about rounding, <clears throat> there is, uh, there are sort of but there are really two ways to two three ways to do this one simple way if you're proficient with excel is you can export it to excel and there are rounding tools built in there so you can just you know roll down the, the rows and send it along um that was what we did for the first that's what we suggested for the first few years that we were doing this but we did have enough people asking um that we turned on this ingredient rounding tool um this is only going to apply to the the, the the ingredients that don't use weights and volumes. So when we're talking about packages or cans or whole loaves of bread or whole onions and things like that, um, it, it'll only apply to those because we assume that the weight and volume is pretty darn accurate that's being entered. Um, and rounding just becomes a little bit more difficult there. <clears throat> but it'll round in two places, both at the shopping list and at the recipe details. And um, you can choose to turn those on or off if you don't want that. Um, and what it will look like is here, we have this round column now in the ingredients and you can choose to round up, round down or to the nearest whole integer for those ingredients that rounding is relevant. Um, yeah, that, that that's amazing because, um, you know, you can buy uh, packets of noodles um, yeah, um, let's say instant noodles, not that I use instant noodles in individual packets but or you can all, all, all buy them in packets of 10. So the multiples of, uh, again, I have you know, a couple of hundred packets of instant noodles left over that I over ordered. And that will go on to another program, but um, uh, rounding is different to that, but uh, the, the ability to actually define how many individual serves are in a packet, uh, can the system do that? Can you say that again? How many? So, 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 many? It, so, uh, at the local supermarket, I can buy in bulk ten individual packets of uh, instant noodles, <laughs> or I can buy one, but it's cheaper for my budget to buy a packet of ten. But the order is for one packet of ten by how many packets I need to serve the the meal, and but yeah. the the menu then allows me to actually yeah work out e each child then has one serving of that packet if it's a group of ten. I see. I see. Um, I guess I think the short answer is no, there's not a, a, a way to tackle that. There is this notes column so that you can you can make notes of, you know, purchased in bulk and packs of 10 or whatever. And okay. that'll flow through to the to the packing list there. Um, I will say um, two two maybe comments to help potentially deal with that. But it also sort of opens up a, a, a similar challenge, which is that 
there are those things that you the the you purchase differently than you would put in a recipe and that is one sort of nut that we haven't fully cracked yet and it's one of the continues to be one of the biggest challenges of food planning in general where you might buy so for example in um i imagine this is the same where you all are but when we work with rice we typically buy rice by weight we buy it by the pound in the in the us um but in the recipes you're typically serving it by volume by cup like how many cups of rice do we put into yeah. this um and that can create real complications in with um with planning uh, quantities so what i usually suggest is to think through is this a tool that's helping you um, hopefully it helps you both with packing and with purchasing but Fundamentally, is there one of those two that you're trying to solve more than the other? And if it's if it's purchasing that you're trying to solve, you should really build your recipes with purchasing in mind. And so in this case, if you're buying um, bulk quantities of instant noodles, you might build your recipe with the purchase quantity being the one that you use in the recipe so that it translates out to this bulk you know, case of noodles on the shopping list. And that'll be a little bit funny on the recipe when it flows through to that final recipe details, because it'll say, you know, 0.2 cases of ramen or something like that. Um, but you're, yeah, I guess the suggestion is to think through what's the fundamental challenge that we're trying to solve and build the recipes with that in mind. Yeah, yeah. no, I understand that. Yeah. Um, uh, Greg, have you got any comments about this, given your history with uh, building uh, from Excel spreadsheets to access to DBAs to S a SQL Server backgrounds. Um, do you want to jump in there? And um, um... John, it's um, it's fantastic to see this this tool. It looks amazing. Um, oh, yeah, so Dave's talking about my history. I've done a, a lot of work in in a similar area, and uh, a big place used used a really similar tool to this. Certainly not as flash, but um, yeah, and that. That also came from an original spreadsheet with which the CEO at the time wrote for one of the really long trips that that place yeah. did it. A I 30, wondered how many spreadsheets trip. are yeah. out there. I think there are thousands and thousands of these spreadsheets being used across the world. Yeah. It's, it's a funny thing. Yeah, look, a couple, a couple of things uh, um, that I'd be really interested in uh, in what, what your insights on is um, certainly at the volume that some of the bigger places in Australia use, you've got a, a dichotomy between the planning bit of doing the catering versus when you get the info for the dietaries. Mm -hmm. So, so you, you'll be doing the planning of the menus, but that's often in advance of you getting the actual dietary um, restrictions. So have you, have you encountered that? And is there any tips and tricks that you use? Yeah. One, one thing I know that has been really helpful for, for some organizations, this doesn't work as well with the fresh ingredients um, because you have to buy those so close to the yep. know, departure yep. of the trip. <laughs> yep, absolutely. Um, but a lot of a lot of organizations use templates, and so they'll make one sample meal plan and say, "Hey, this is what we typically serve on this kind of trip." Um, so we could think of this inside the outhouse as that they might put it in the templates folder. They might lock it here so that it doesn't get edited. Yeah. And then it, there's a cloning option here so that you can start with one that's just sort of a sample one. Yeah. And then as the date comes closer, you would clone it, adjust the specific dietary restrictions gotcha. and then, and then send it out for, for shopping. Yeah. Um, it's a, it's a really good point you make with the, the, you know, the dichotomy between the perishable stuff and the dry stuff. Cause you can, again, going back to that Dave's, uh, you know, 20,000 packets of ramen noodles, he can have yeah, them yeah. in his warehouse ready, ready to roll out on a program. Yeah, Whereas exactly. You, you can't order the apples the same way. Yeah. Yeah. One thing that I didn't show here, I'll turn it on quickly just to give you a sense of it. Um, is this export customization. Um, and really what this allows us to do. So there are a lot of organizations that will, buy in bulk those non-perishables before the season. Mm -hmm. So the tool yep. that you mentioned, Rob, is really helpful for that to say, like we build one template and then we say, okay, I think I'm gonna have about, you know, 15 of these. And then you um, you pull that list. What I just turned on allows you to pull it um, by store and by department as well. Uh, yeah, so you could, 
if you flag all those ingredients as non-perishable, then you can pull a list of just those. And then as you come in to the actual um, group that you're planning for, oops, let me edit that. Oops, sorry, bouncing around too fast here. Um, instead of just a, a PDF or Excel button, we can now do the same thing at this group level. So now we could come in and 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 look at you know just the fruits and veg for. Yeah, great. So so you can split it split it for the, for the stages of that of that kind of shopping. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. As well as by store. Yeah, well, and by duration. I don't know how often this is the case in your trips and your groups, but if you're restocking, for example, part yep. way through a trip, you can. Um, yeah, well, that's just the ingredients needed for food. awesome. Yeah, 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 that was one of the questions I had about different different uh, food drops. We often term them over here. So you've got a river section and then a, a walk section or something, and different. You you often have different, real different types of food on different parts yeah. of that trip. Yeah, yeah. So the yeah. other one that was just interesting would be on on that suppliers list. And I saw I think you've already covered this, but if I have um, you know some. So Victoria versus Queensland sets of suppliers. So I'm getting my box of ramen noodles for Dave from a diff, very different yeah. place in Victoria as I have from for Queensland. Yeah. Yeah, um, we do. So I, I don't think I have it turned on right now in this account. There's um, <clears throat> there is a there. We had one organization reach out with that specific request a few years ago, and we built it in such that I, I'd have to go into the back end and actually turn it on. We don't advertise this. It's not on the list of features. It's not in the pricing and whatnot, um, um, as far as I remember, at least. But we can turn on manually a multiple locations option. And basically what it does is add a box up here to tell you which location we're looking at so that you can adjust the store and department and cost for those locations. And then when you pull the meal plan, you would pull it for specific locations. Let me pull a shopping list for um, one town versus another town. One town versus, yeah. Wow, that's yeah. fantastic. And it, it's always good to, you know, <laughs> throw the curly questions and go, yeah, yeah, we've got a, a, um, a plan to solve that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's there. There are like a few little little ones in there that um, were sort of unique requests that we we worked on and are just not very frequently used. This ingredient tagging is another one, um, where in the same way that you might tag. Uh, recipe as being a backcountry recipe versus a front country recipe yeah. so that you can very quickly in the meal plan see you know filter those i didn't i didn't quite show that um yeah. but in the way that we flag recipes so that we can you know filter on specific tags to do backcountry or whatever and yeah. just see those recipes yeah we can do the same with ingredients and that's another one of those little features that isn't one that's very widely used but that would be the same if you have really specific styles of shopping, like we buy this preseason, and you want to tag all your ingredients as preseason, and then um, and and fresh or whatnot. The department column tends to work for most organizations to manage that. Yeah. But if there's another another way, um, we can tag that as well. Yeah. Um, I'll ask a, a real techie question just to uh, just to the bug the people who aren't so techie in the room. Um, yeah. What are you running the platform on out of interest? Um, is it a SQL server? Uh, are you in Amazon uh, um, servers? Um, just out of interest. It's, it's in Amazon servers right now, and we're hoping in the next few weeks to move it to something called Heroku, if you're familiar with that. And it's a Salesforce, Salesforce Greg managed <laughs> platform. Greg, Greg's um, a D DBA in the group, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and some of this gets over my head, and so I have to I have to call in the experts to help. But um, it's um, yeah, we're 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 hoping to move to a different platform, but the functionality to the end user should stay the same. I, I got one more specific question. Um, do you have any plans to implement um, to solve my problem of food coming back that are still good to sit on the shelf for an upcoming <laughs> smaller program? can we find a way to you know scan or, or or count the stuff back in so i can go to this as my one spot know what is in my storeroom right behind me here yeah and then when i run the menu or sorry when i run the order for the next program i know what i've already got behind me so the order adjusts i don't have plans to do that but i would love to if i get questions about that or similarly like an inventory question um all the time and 
um, I, I haven't, I haven't wrapped my brain exactly around the best process to, to do that. I can see, I can, I can see how it could be really, really helpful to automatically manage it inventory where, you know, you click print shopping list and it deducts all those quantities and then a report back in and it increases them back up. Um, but we haven't gotten there yet at least. And I always, I keep saying, I keep saying no to questions like that. And then eventually that's, that's how this whole settings page came as I say no enough times. And then finally we are like, all right, all right, fine. We'll, we'll add in this, this funny feature. So I, I wouldn't count it out, but no plans currently. Um, John, just a yeah. question with the, with the meal plan, like where it's got Monday, and your line Tuesday and your line of, you know, what, what meals are going to be had on a specific day. Um, yeah. Is there the ability to split a day? So I would often, uh, we do a lot of self catering with our students, so they will go and do their own shopping, but I'll still be feeding staff every day of the week. And then, you know, for half of the week, I'll be feeding students, but not, you know, the first half. And, but we, we also cook in smaller groups. So the staff will, uh, often have food that's a little bit different to the students. Is there a way to split that or do I just go different menus and print them separately? There's not a way to split days currently. Um, I think different menus and, and split and printed differently and then you aggregated for shopping would probably be best. Yep. Um, you can do, um, we can put these the day numbers, that doesn't help you, but and you can label these differently. So I, I suppose you could come up with a way to have to hijack some of these columns, you know, if it's, for example, if you're just doing lunch and dinner, you could have lunch, dinner and lunch, staff lunch and staff dinner or something like that. Um, yeah. But it, it is stuck to four columns. Um, no, that's right. And, like, and I, what I did like about this is that it then generates a, a menu for, you know, say the students to work off or the, like we, you know, we have rotating staff, we use yeah. freelance staff. So for them to come in and go, yeah, this is how you're supposed to prepare that meal is gold um you know if we need to run that separately and go here's your staff book here's the student book yeah yeah not, not a deal breaker at all it's great it seems like that's are you from, coming from the university um space or is this a no, I, I work directly with the school so i'm based in the school and we run a okay. program from um you know five-year-olds up to 18 year olds yeah okay the the i've seen that the cook group model is one that seems to exist um, here in the U.S. at the University Outdoor Programs a lot. Um, and most of the universities that I've worked with are doing that, what you're talking about, where they have a different um, meal plans for cook groups because you'll yep. also have different dietary restrictions in those cook groups. Yeah, and, definitely. And then when it comes time to shop, you pull them all together and, um, and then print off the PDFs separately. Yeah. No, that's perfect. That's great. And it, it, there is, yeah, like we would, you know, we operate in on a tranche here. So there's groups of three and I, you know, I might have six groups of three in a group and I go, great. You know, one of these needs dietary requirements. Yeah. Add that in separately and, you know, away you go. And yeah, you know, the, the functionality to do that per program or per, you know, it, per unit size is fantastic. Great. Um, I, I breeze past this too, just as a placeholder, but, we dropped this box in here. So when you do have those specific groups that you want to capture the specific dietary restrictions to say, okay, Rob is gluten-free and Greg is vegetarian. You, there's a place to just sort of drop whatever notes you need to in here too. That'll show up on the PDF so that it goes out with them too. Cool. Um, are there any other questions from anybody in the group? We're, um, we're coming up to the end of our session uh, and we're always respectful of people's time here. Um, any other burning questions about dietary or the system or the pricing? Um, and just a disclosure, um, uh, the outhouse isn't getting anything in return for this. Uh, I just found this an amazing product. I used it once and I'm going to try and use it again on uh, multiple occasions. So um, there's no quid pro quo. Um, I just figured John and his product hadn't got much exposure in a pretty big market here in Australia where we all have to deal with transi cooking, small groups and lots of dietary needs. So, um, but yeah, has anyone got any other questions? I appreciate it, David. It's, it was fun. It's been a fun journey building this. And I was super naive in thinking that that was going to be the hard part and <laughs> getting, <laughs> getting, getting the word out there has proven to be 
way more challenging than um, than actually building it. And it's we're seeing some good momentum now, but it, you know, here six years in, it's it's a it's a grind to to to, to get it out there. And um, I appreciate you sharing it with the Australian world. Rob, you have got any other questions? I just want to say thanks very much. You know, I've been on the receiving end of some of the uh, systems that Kells have built to, you know, solve these kind of problems. And, you know, they are a godsend compared to what I have to, you know, work with at the moment, which is try to create my own spreadsheets, which is not my forte. Um, but, you know, looking at something like this, um, yeah, is fantastic. Really well done. It's a great, great hey, Thanks tool. so much, Rob. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Um, Feel free to to reach out if you do have questions that pop up later. Um, it's still a a small shop of me and my partner working on this, and so if you send an email, it'll I'll be the one responding to it. Um, so um, feel free to reach out with any any questions that come up. I appreciate that, Rob. Thank you. Uh, I yep. I add my uh, congratulations for that. It looks like an amazing tool, and uh, yeah, it's. Uh, It'll just get a lot more kids under the sky, which is what we're all in the uh, in the industry for. So that's great. Yeah, yeah, and reduce some food waste along the way. I hope, and some some headache as well. <laughs> hey, um, thanks for uh, coming in and sharing this most amazing resource, John. Um, yeah, I can see so much application in lots of different programs uh, here in Australia. Um, I guess I would just like to, I, I think the other application that I sort of see is perhaps in the area of, uh, um, you know, you, you're working in a busy program and you have a limited amount of staff resources. And I've always found particularly long programs that a lot of those staff are devoted to menu planning, food organization and shopping. Mm -hmm. Um, and I see this as a resource which is going to streamline those staff and take them out of that role and perhaps into what they're more trained to do, which is the getting kids under the skies, as Carl's puts it, and uh, instructing people. So thanks very much again for coming inside the outhouse. We will definitely try and spread the word about wholesome foods through our socials and uh, as it's very late in the day in your world now hopefully you will get uh, some shut eye before the dawn comes once again on part of the our yeah. team thanks very much and thanks everyone for coming in and asking such good questions <laughs>